and welcome to part two of our inventory system series. In the last part, we set up the basic core functionality of our item systems and inventory components with the various variables and functions that we'll need. In this episode, we're going to work on the interaction system that our player will use to interact with the items around the world to pick them up. So let's get started and putting it in the game. So for our interaction system, we're actually going to make use of the inventory component for this as well. So I'm going to go find my inventory component, inventory system, and open this up. And in here, we're going to go and head over to our event graph, and we need a tick event for this. And we're using a tick event because we need to constantly check what we're looking at inside the game. So we do an event tick, and then we'll create a function for our interaction tracing. Interaction trace. Okay, now for this we're going to use a sphere trace and this will just give us a nice thick line going out of the character's uh, point of view. we we'll do sphere trace by channel and the starting position and end position will make use of the camera itself. So we're doing a first person game. If you're doing a third person game this bit will need to be a little bit different um, but for the most part it's mostly the same. So for our player camera manager This thing is going to return whichever camera we're looking through at that moment in time. And we need to get the location of that camera. So actor location. And put that into the start. The end is going to be calculated by using the forward vector of the camera. So we can get actor forward vector. And we're going to multiply this by how far away can we interact with something. So we'll just convert that to a multiplied by float. And this will increase the strength. Now, the reason why we have to do this is because the forward vector is normalized. So it's only gives us a value of one at most. So we need to increase that, obviously, because one is very, very short. So we'll just do this and promote that to a variable. And we'll call this one interaction range. And I'm making it available. That way you can easily tweak and change this inside of the player's, uh, player ca character settings without having to dive back into the component. Once we've got this, this is what we call our offset. And we're going to add this offset to our start location. So take the start location, add our offset onto it. And then put that back into the end. Now for a sphere trace, you do need to give it a radius. And I am going to use 15 as my radius. And we also want to make use of a trace channel. Now at the moment, we only have two trace channels, with visibility and camera. These two come with the engine and are pretty basic. So Visibility, the idea behind it is if it's something that can be seen or blocked by the what you, what you physically can't see, uh, you want to block that, you can do. Whereas camera is literally, you want to stop the camera from viewing through it. Okay, so, um, but that's the general terms, but you can use it for whatever you like, really. Um, in our case, we're going to make a separate one. We're going to do that in our project settings. And in here, you're going to search for channel. And you'll go down, you'll find the section for trace channels. A new trace channel. And we're going to put in one called interactable or interactive, we'll call it. And the default response for this is going to be ignore. Because we don't want to make everything interactable, only certain things. And those certain things are going to be a lot less than everything. So we'll do accept for inter uh, ignore there. Close that. And now if we compile this here, we should see it in our drop down here. If you don't see it here, just compile it and it should then appear. Okay. Um, okay, so we've got that going on there. Um, actors to ignore. We want to ignore probably the owner of, the uh, of this component. So just right click, do get owner. And we'll put that in our actors to ignore. Do make array first. Nope. Make array. And then put that in there. Okay, so uh, that is the tracing part done. Next, we need to put this into a branch to determine whether or not we actually are looking at something that we can interact with. So let's put in a branch like that. Now, normally when I do this, I like to do the true line first, and then doing the exceptions in the false branch later. So we'll do the true uh, true, true branches here first. So if it's true, we do hit something, we need to know what we're hitting. So we're going to break open our hit result and get our hit actor. 
Now, the first check we're going to be is whether or not the hit actor is going to be... Actually, first of all, let's promote that to a verbal. Let's do it this way around. Promote it to a verbal, and we'll call this one the look at actor. This is the actor you're currently looking at. Remember, this will only ever be things that are interactive because we've got this trace channel here for interactive items. So we'll do that. Um, and then we'll put that into our true branch here. We then are going to set up an interact interface. And that interact interface is going to handle what's going to happen when we look at something and also when we interact with it later on too. So in your content drawer, open it up and in your inventory folder here, we're going to create a new inter interface. Go to blueprints, blueprint interface, and we start off with I, and then we do interact interface. Open this up. And this is going to have two functions. We're going to have look at, and we have another one called interact with. Now, a interface is a way of giving uh, common functions uh, that are that you put onto any actor, but ha would have different implementations of what actually happens when you actually call these functions. So, uh, really useful for interaction interfaces in this case. Um, so with that done, we're going to do on our look at, define here our functions. And by the way, you, these are only definable. You can't edit actually what's inside of them. You just define the parameters and design of it. Um, so now look at here, we're going to have in our outputs a text. And this is going to be a message that we want to show on the screen to say what they're going to pick up. So we'll call this one message. Like that. And we'll come back to inter interact with later. Okay, so the way this works is that if you drag out from look at actor and search for look at, you'll see the option to look at and in brackets message. This means it's going to attempt to call this look at function. However, if this actor does not implement it, then it's not going to do anything. It's just to ignore it and carry on. But if it does, we can define what to do, such as this message here. So for now, let's do, just do a print string to demonstrate that working. Right, so let's put this through a tester. Now, to be able to test this, we need to make an item that we can actually interact with. So let's create that test item. I'm going to go to a new folder here, items. And I'm going to create a new blueprint class called actor. And we'll call this one test item. And open it up. Now, the test item here, we need to make sure is implementing the interact interface first. You do that on the class settings. So over here on the right hand side, implemented interfaces, you go to add and you can search for your interact interface. That will now mean that this thing can use those functions and you'll see them now down here on the bottom left interfaces. So if I open up look at, if I double click on it, I can type in any message here and it will show that message on the other side. So let's say here, pick up test item. Okay. File and save. So the inventory system is going to be looking at it. Then it's going to call that function. And that's going to return this text here. Which we're then printing to the screen. So we'll keep an eye on that in the left hand corner. But before that, we need to make sure we call the interaction trace on our tick event. So back in your event graph, drag out interaction trace and plug that in. Okay. Now to make it the item that we want to put in, we're going to drag that in. Oh, first I need to add a mesh to it so it's something actually you look at there we go that do and oh buddy apologies there and we also want to make sure that this is going to block the interactive trace so if you go down to the collision settings and you do this for each item that you need to be interactive also npcs or anything else you want to interact with um you could use the same system for that um but if i change that from block all dynamic to custom I'm going to then go to interactive trace response and turn that to block. Okay. So we're going to drag this out, pop this in, play, and if I walk up to it, we don't see nothing. Hold on. 
I think that's because my interaction range is set to zero. Yeah, let's change that to uh, 300. Let's try that again. There we go. And now it's printing out all those things. I click this on a tick event. It's constantly printing out all those things. Now, because it's constantly printing out those things, that becomes an issue because we don't want to constantly be adding messages to the screen to the player. That's very wasteful. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to change it slightly to allow us to only do it once every time we see something new. So if I go to my interaction system, interaction trace, and before we go into look at actor and then look at, we're going to do a check to see if the look actor is different from the previous one. So we only want to do this if they're different. So we'll put that in here with a branch. True. And we'll check in the hit actor is not equal to and we'll be plugging our look look at actor which is the one we've currently been looking at so put that in there and put that in there and now it will only do this if we're actually looking at something completely different we do have to, oh i forgot to plug that back in there we go um yeah so it only do it if it's completely different we compile and save that there you go now i'm only getting it once there Okay, but if I look away, I come back, it doesn't turn back on. Which is not what I want, because when I look away, I want it to let me look back at it and still show a new message. So, how do we fix that? Well, that looking away part is happening on the first branch when we do the return value. Remember, this is only going to return true if we hit something that has interactive set to block. So, on the force of this, we're going to get rid of our look at actor. So let's take out look at actor, set. And if we leave it blank like this, that means it's going to have nothing on it. Compile, save that. And there we go. So now every time I look at my block, it's going to show the message. I'll look away and look back. It should show it again. But again, only once. And there we go. We've got an interaction system in our game. Now the second half of this is creating the item data component. This component will be applied to our items to tell them what item they should belong to based upon the item data table. You can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely, and they're all available to all my patrons early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support and if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button it really does help out a lot. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.